Hi, Daphne. And uh, I'm a postdoc at uh, Mike Master University and uh, working with Dr. Adam Hitchcock on the project uh, uh, on material char characterization by Stixon and uh, tachography technique. And today in this talk, I will present a brief introduce of the soft X-ray tachography and uh, its future uh, further extent and uh, application in the 4D imaging by spectral tigo tomography. And so in this talk, I will focus on the general introduce uh, about the tachography technique, the tachography based on soft X-ray stixon and its further extend application in the 4D imaging by spectral tycho tomography. After each section, I will make a small break and go for the questions. As we know, for the conventional microscope, uh, for example, both the optical and the electron microscope, the resolution of the microscope is uh, limited by the uh, numerical aperture of the optical lenses. For the transmission X-ray microscope, for example, the scanning transmission X-ray microscope I will talk today, since the resolution of a microscope in, scanning mo uh, in, in a scanning mode depends on the size of a illum illumination spot. So in other words, its resolution is uh, depend by the outermost zoom width of the zoom plate for the steps and microscope. Currently, the zoom clay with 20 nanometer outermost zoom width can be manufactured for the conventional Stixon. So which means the highest uh, spatial resolution of the Stixon is around 20 nanometers. So this is about uh, tachography. To discuss about Tycho, first I want to dis, uh, talk about the coherent diffraction image. Uh, imaging. The CDI technique is a lensless microscope technique. This is a, uh, here uh, I show a, sch a schematic figure for the CDI setup, which I grabbed from the Wikipedia. Assume we have an object to measure. If you illuminate the object with a coherent beam, such as X-ray or laser beam, you will get a huge diffraction pattern downstream on a 2D detector, as shown in the figure. And the diffraction pattern contains all the information about the object that uh, were illuminated. But sure, it does not look at the same uh, as the same as the object. Uh, the diffraction pattern represents the amount of energy in each. Uh, in every spa uh, spatial frequency inside the illuminated volume. For each spot's location on the detector, the intensity distribution in the far field diffraction pattern is recorded by the detector. In other words, we only have the absorption, or we can call it amplitude information recorded by the detector. So it's a Fourier transform of the real object. And uh, at the same time, we lost the information of the base delay. So as discussed in the last slide, the diffractive pattern is a Fourier transform of the illuminated object. And uh, you will think, well, just apply the inward Fourier transform, you will get back the object. Yes, you can do that if you know uh, the real object is but we don't know, uh, we have no idea about the real object. So all you know is the intensity of the diffraction pattern, but we don't have the phase. So to get the real uh, object uh, back, we need to use the phase retrieval algorithm to achieve the reconstruction. Here is the basic idea of the phase retrieval method. First, since we have no idea what we are looking at, so we still have, uh, but we still have some uh, uh, limited information or constraints about the object. For example, we know the illuminated field, uh, field of view, uh, how big it is. So we can always start from a random guess with a known constraint. Uh, then apply the Fourier transform on the random gas will get the Fourier transformed amplitude and phase of the initial gas. 
absolute phases is not the real amplitude and phase, but we know the amplitude of the real object, which we measured uh, by the uh, diffraction pattern. So we use the measured amplitude image to replace the random noise. Then we can do a reverse transform. Then we will get an updated object, which is closer to the real one compared to the random gas. Then we repeat the same route, do the Fourier transform for the new object to see if it matches the measured amplitude here. So if it matches exactly, then we will have the right answer. Uh, but here, uh, for the uh, first few iterations, we cannot get the uh, matches, uh, matched uh, amplitude. It's just uh, closer than the previous, uh, previous one. So we do the loops and we go round, round, and round. And after enough iteration, we will find the amplitude that we got from the reconstruct object matches the uh, experimental data. Then you can, uh, then you cannot make further progress on this. Here you end up with a real good solution what the object really is. This technique is called the CDI. Uh, or coherent diffraction image. It's a kind of lensless technique, which means you don't need a lens, a physical lens at all. Uh, theoretically, the resolution is depending on the wavelength of the uh, uh, beam source and also the distance from the diffraction spot to the center of the detector, which is the Q value. So in the detector, the center part of, uh, is a low frequency component and uh, all the fine detail is in the outer part of the CCD camera. So uh, based on the CDI technique we discussed, the field of view depends on the spot size that we eliminate on the object. However, for the real measurement, we wish the images has a huge field of view. If we want to achieve both the field of view of the object and the high spatial resolution at the same time, tachography is a technique to overcome these challenges. So we can consider the tachography is a scanning version of the CDI technique. For the tachography, we can keep the same basic setup as the CDI technique. An object is scanned with the X-ray beam in overlapping spot. Here, uh, we can use a different uh, scanning mode. For example, we can uh, scan the sample by moving the sample, sample position or by moving the focus of the beam spot position. For each spot location, uh, the intensity distribution in the far field uh, diffraction pattern will be recorded uh, by the camera. The most important important things is uh, there should be enough overlapping between each spot. So here we should use uh, uh, the face retrieval algorithm to reconstruct the real object. The difference between the Tycho and the <coughs> CDI technique that is that we take the overlapping into account. We also start from random guess for the first spot. After one iteration, uh, the face retrieval uh, will get uh, an up, update dated object guess. And uh, we take, take out the overlapping area and uh, extract it, use it for the calculation for the second spot. Uh, therefore, the second spot has a better initial start. Then we go through all the scanning spots. Uh, then go through again, again for iteration. Since each scan point has more accurate uh, objective information uh, compared from the uh, previous one, uh, so compared to the conventional CDI technique, the, uh, the uh, tachography using scanning mode has a much faster convergence speed with fewer iteration. So if we compare the CDI with Tycho, the Tycho has an unlimited field, uh, field of view. That means we can scan uh, a, an area as large as we can. And due to the ro uh, robust algorithm that we use here, we don't need a very harsh experimental sighting. For example, we don't need to cover the large Q area in the 
uh, reciprocal space. Uh, we can use a smaller detector and uh, the, uh, the request of the dynamic range of the detector is also lower than the CDI technique. Okay, so here, uh, this is the basic introduce about uh, introduction about the title. So uh, well, I will break here and uh, is there any question? Yeah, there's um, a few. Uh, to begin, uh, uh, I'm curious, the, you described the tychography in the context of x-rays. How mm -hmm. similar or different is the, uh, the data processing when you do the tychography with x-rays as opposed to with electron scattering or optical wavelength scattering? Uh... Here we... Uh... For the reconstruction, we here we use the phase retrieval uh, algorithm for the uh, diffraction patterns, and uh, we just uh, use uh, different uh, uh, diffraction spots uh, coordinate and do the phase uh, 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 reverse Fourier transform and get back the real object. And uh, I, I'm not quite uh, familiar with the, the other technique that you are mentioning here about the. Okay, uh, it's just a, a, at optical wavelengths and also with electron mm -hmm. scattering, tychography is done. And I was just curious if the x-ray community was able to build on top of existing software from electron uh, yeah. or optical. Yeah, uh, yeah there are, uh, uh, the tachography is also can be used for the, like the laser beam and the electron uh, uh, microscopy. And uh, uh, the, recently I, uh, I think there is some study about the uh, tachography on the electron microscope on the TEM. And uh, uh, it, uh, this work was done by the uh, Cornell University. And uh, we did some research on uh, some kind of 2D material and uh, use this kind of tycho uh, reconstruction. Uh, uh, they achieved around uh, 0 0.8 Armstrong uh, spatial resolution, I think. But I think the basic uh, algorithm uh, for the reconstruction is uh, uh, almost uh, the same, just uh, some uh, details in the software are different, yeah. Okay, very good. You should continue. Thank you for giving all that background. It's very helpful. Okay. Uh, so uh, the next uh, section, I will uh, uh, talking about the tachography based on the stakes. Uh, the tycho, uh, can be uh, tachography can be easily achieved by the extremely simple hard, uh, hardware and setup. Uh, for Stixon-based uh, tachography, we can keep the basic experimental setup of the ambient Stixon, just uh, change the PMT detector into a CCD or a CMOS detector to capture the diffraction patterns. Here is a, a schematic uh, image of the uh, sticks and Tycho. A central stop on the zone plane and uh, OSA uh, is uh, put uh, before the sample to pre uh, prevent the uh, actual light of the diffraction orders from reaching the sample. The coherent uh, incident beam illuminates uh, the sample with uh, uh, a certain spot size as the focus lens. And the sample was moving with the raster grid position to make sure the scanning spots are overlapping with each, uh, with, with each other. And a CCD or CMOS detector will be placed downstream to capture the transmission beam and uh, save the diffraction patterns as a uh, sequence image stack for further uh, rec reconstruction. Uh, here I show a small movie. Uh, as an example, what the detector will capture during the tachography measurement. It has been plotted in a, a log scale, and we can find a large imprint with the zone plate shape. Diffraction pattern changes with the scanning position on the sample, and the center part is a low frequency uh, component, and the fine detail with high Q is in the outer part of the, of the CCD camera, which can provide the fine detail of the illuminated volume. After recording, uh, the images will send to a, a robust uh, computer for the reconstruction. 
uh, the reconstruction process will include the pre-processing and the final uh, reconstruction. For the pre-processing, uh, the, the images will be binned and the background will be subtracted. And the right image show here, the right image show an example that we measured uh, on the CMOS star as the Hermes spin light uh, at Soleil uh, last April. And a huge improvement on the spatial resolution has been achieved here. So if we look at the conven uh, conventional sticks, we only have a resolution of 50 nanometers. But for the typography, a nine nanometer, uh, nanometer resolution has been achieved. Now the highest resolution achieved by the soft X-ray is around three nanometer. So it's important to mention that even the tycho is uh, the tachography is uh, much powerful than the conventional sticks. And there are still some disadvantage of this technique need to be improved in the future. For example, the measurement speed to take uh, an entire tycho map is, is relatively slow than the conventional sticks. And since it uh, using the scanning mode and the reconstruction after measurement really takes a lot of time. For example, uh, one uh, 50 by 50 points measurement with 100 milliseconds exposure time will take uh, more than five minutes for the measurement and uh, maybe another five to 10 minutes for the data reconstruction, which means that uh, uh, for one Tachography image, it will take more than 15 minutes for each image. And secondly, the huge data sites created by the measurement need a very robust platform for data storage and processing. And if we have a, a thousand by thousand resolution CCD camera, which uh, save the data is a 16 bit uh, format, so it's uh, for each image is about uh, two megabytes. And uh, for a 50 by 50 point of scan, it will create more than five gigabytes data in the storage. And uh, sometimes if we do the spectral or in situ operator or tomography measurement by this kind of a Tycho technique, uh, the same area measuring will easily tend dozens of, of time. So uh, that means huge uh, plenty of the uh, data set will be uh, generated. And finally, the, uh, Tycho, te the, the Tycho technique also needs a fast algorithm and uh, which need a uh, uh, robust uh, GPU and also uh, CPU. And uh, most important, a fast reading and read out camera will uh, with high dynamic range and the lower background noise is also needed. So uh, after we knew about uh, how this 2D Tycho imaging work based on the sticks and setup, the real power of this kind of technique is to achieve spectral microscope with a much higher resolution, which is known as the spectral tachography. The conventional sticks and technique uh, Link the X-ray absorption spectrum with the 2D imaging, which can provide uh, quantitative uh, chemical in information of the diff different material system. However, limited by the uh, physical, uh, the aperture of the physical lens and the spot size, the spatial resolution can only reach to 20 uh, nanometers now for the conventional sticks. So when we do the characterization for the uh, some nanostructure in the object, we cannot get higher enough resolution to ident identify the different chemical components. So this slide show uh, an example of the work did by uh, Dr. Adam Hitchcock, former PhD student, Zhu Xiaohui, on the uh, magnetotactic uh, uh, bacteria. Understanding the evolution and uh, mechanism of uh, uh, bio, uh, uh, bio, uh, bio of the uh, magnetron 
So the left figure compares the conventional Stixon transmission image covering uh, several uh, bacteria cells with a typography image uh, with the, uh, and the left side with the typo image of the same region. Uh, the data were measured at uh, uh, seven, uh, 710 EV, which is the uh, uh, absorption peak around the iron L3 absorption peak. Uh, this measurement is using a zone plate with 100 nanometer of uh, zone plate. Here, the typical morphology of this individual uh, magnet zone can be observed and uh, identified in the tachography image. However, in the Stixon uh, image, due to the low resolution uh, zone play we, we use here, uh, the magnet zone are not, uh, cannot uh, individually resolve and uh, barely uh, uh, identify from the uh, cell structure. So, Besides the amplitude uh, uh, signal are widely used for the image analysis. Uh, the face information getting from the Tycho reconstruction can also provide uh, some detailed information uh, about the chemistry. So if we take a closer look at the uh, image presented on the right side, uh, it shows that the magnet zone can be clearer visualized in the face uh, uh, face image in the pre edge uh, region area uh, below uh, 707. So, if we uh, check the uh, absorption image, uh, we cannot see the individual uh, magneton zone very clear. So, with the, the magneton zone, with this, uh, the, significant, uh, the significant change in the contrast and the morphology in the face signal means that the face signal might uh, offer more information in terms of the chemical uh, difference and the chemical mapping compared to the absorption image. And the uh, next slides, I will give the, another example, uh, which is uh, my postdoc proje project uh, on the air gel uh, material. So the air gel material is uh, porous ultralight and uh, relative hard material. Uh, material. Uh, by adjust, uh, adjusting the pore size and uh, uh, connectivity of uh, the subtract and adding coating uh, with uh, controlled thinness, uh, spatial distribution, and uh, also the density, uh, this uh, material can be optimized for some uh, specific application, for example, the catalyst material and the energy storage material. Uh, this project is a collaborative project, a project between the Lawrence Livermore National Lab and the Arbor Group. The study is focusing on the uh, atomic, uh, atomo uh, atomic uh, layer dispersion uh, coated uh, air gel material. So it's ALD coated zinc oxide uh, uh, aluminum air gel material. So the mechanism of the ALD coating is still, uh, is still unclear and uh, how to optimize the ALD coating process is also unclear. To understand the real 3D structure and the chemical distribution of the 3D space. So we need to uh, quantitatively uh, characterize the 3D structure of this material. However, this material is uh, quite easily uh, uh, radiation damaged by the electron beam. So we cannot use the traditional characterization method like the TEM. So here the soft X-ray sticks and will be uh, ideal tools for the, this kind of uh, investigation. So we have done a lot of work based on the ambient Stixon since 2016. However, due to the low spatial uh, resolution of the Stixon, we can only achieve, uh, achieve the resolution of uh, 13 nanometers, so which is uh, impossible to distinguish the two different uh, nanostructure components. But as we know, the thickness of this 
material, uh, the zinc uh, oxide layer is uh, smaller than uh, 50 nanometer. So therefore, the spectral tachography will be an ideal choice for the, uh, this kind of work. Our first uh, tycho measurement was taken at the uh, beam life uh, 5321 at ALS from 2017. The best uh, 2D resolution we achieved is about uh, 15 uh, nanometer, and uh, for the 3D spatial resolution is about 30 nanometer, which is better than the normal spectrum, but still not good enough for our sample. So since uh, 2018, the uh, cosmic beam line uh, at ALS is open to the beam line user. Uh, fortunately, we uh, have uh, been one of the first users. So the uh, capability of this uh, cosmic beam line is much powerful than the old 5321. Uh, at this beam line, a three nanometer spatial resolution has been achieved before. So here I will take our project uh, as a uh, cos cosmic as an example of the spectral tachography to show you uh, the power of this technique. Uh, we have three times measurement at the cosmic beam line until now. First uh, measurement from October uh, 2018 and two measurement in 2019. And uh, the sample we used uh, was prepared by the Simon Philip and cut into a small uh, a prism or a cylinder pin. And uh, the figure in the, uh, in the left shows the first uh, prism that we measured at the cosmic. And uh, uh, if you look uh, at the middle, uh, the, the image in the middle, it shows oh. an example. Yeah. Um, I don't think your slide advanced. You might need to unshare and then share again. Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, so can you see the slide now? I see the flower with the aerogel on top. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, and uh, so this is uh, uh, the first amendment that we cut the, uh, we use the signal fib to cut the material to a, a, a prism sample which has the uh, length about uh, uh, 15 uh, micro and uh, uh, in the middle, it's an uh, uh, example of the Tycho rec uh, reconstruction image at uh, the energy of uh, 1058 EV. And uh, uh, here we also compare the two images that we generated from the sticks amendment, the, the con uh, conventional sticks amendment and the Tycho amendment at the same beam line. So if we compare these two images, and uh, we can find that there's a huge difference between these uh, uh, spatial resolution for Stixon and the Tycho. So uh, uh, if we look at the line profile, uh, which marked uh, the same area across the sample, uh, the Tycho will give you a very fine structure of the material. And uh, until now, we have uh, the best resolution that we have achieved in this kind of material for the single tycho image is around uh, five nanometer. Okay, uh, did the, the slide change? Yes, it's excellent. Okay, before the tycho uh, experiment, uh, uh, we measured the spectra of the zinc L edge and the aluminum K edge spectra uh, using the ambient sticks and stack mode. Uh, the intensity was transformed to the optical density corresponding to one nanometer thin SPU material as shown in the left. Uh, so tachography absorption, uh, here we take uh, uh, two uh, 
measurement for each uh, component, uh, measure the, the pre edge and the absorption edge of each uh, composite for the uh, which we get from the stick sense spectra. Uh, the two energy are marked uh, uh, in the spectrum. So after reconstruction, the reconstructed amplitude image are selected for the chemical mapping uh, generate. First, uh, we should convert the amplitude image to optical density and uh, then uh, generate uh, the four different uh, uh, energy uh, Tycho maps as a stack map and uh, align it. After that, we can generate uh, the uh, quantitative uh, 2D chemical distribution image by taking the difference between the absorption edge and the pre-edge. Here I show you guys two images uh, that is uh, zooming the uh, chemical map of the zinc oxide coating and uh, the alumina subject, uh, uh, substitute. The right figure is uh, color uh, coated the uh, map of the both component. From the 2D chemical distribution map, we can find the uh, alumina aerogel structure is uh, uh, relatively uniform and it has the nanoporous network and the zinc oxide coating distributed in the small holes and pores of the uh, alumina 3D structure. And the layer thickness of the zinc coating is uh, around 15 nanometers if we use the conventional friction to characterize this comp uh, this material the pixel belongs uh, belongs to the zinc, uh, zinc oxide and aluminum signal will be mixed together and cannot be distinguished so if you take a further look at uh, some small uh, zinc oxide particles uh, crystals and uh, the size of these particles is smaller than 10 nanometers width, which is uh, impossible to be identified by the sticks. Uh, the 2D spatial resolution analysis, uh, uh, we, have the, we have done this kind of uh, spatial resolution analysis by the Fourier ring uh, correlation, uh, uh, correlation uh, uh, and uh, the uh, result is about uh, 6 to 5 nanometers for each component. So this is a big uh, significant improvement of the spatial resolution compared to our previous uh, investigate based, based on the sticks and the 5321 Tycho. So the spectral tycoscopy technique can uh, bring the uh, quantitative analysis based on the spectral microscopy to a new value. Okay, so uh, I, will, I think I have finished the 2D title part and uh, I will uh, make a break here. So, uh, very, very, very good. You have many questions. Excellent. Um, we'll start with Matthew Marcus. You had a question? Yes. <clears throat> I hope you can hear me clearly. I've got a bad throat. Anyway, in slide nine, the one with the magnetotactic bacteria, that one. Mm -hmm. if, uh, if you look at the 708.5 image, uh, the phase image, you see a halo yeah. around each magnetosome. Yeah. So look at the phase. Is that a real artif Is that a real feature or is that some kind of artifact? Yeah, I think... Uh, a bright uh, ring. That's some kind of, yeah, I think that's kind of some uh, real feature uh, of the uh, cell structure. So would it be something like an oxidation state difference? Uh, mm, uh, I haven't go through uh, the whole paper, uh, so I, I I have no idea about uh, what kind of feature that. Uh, uh -huh. uh, in the that could be interesting if it's yeah, real. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so there's a huge difference if you take like a look at the absorption and the phase. So uh, the change, uh, the in uh, the contrast change from the phase is much higher than the absorption image. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, Pavani, you have a question? Uh, yes, hi, Dr. Yuan. Uh, hi. My question is, uh, what is a, what are the constraints you can put on the sample size and thickness? What is the best sample size and thickness for this um, technique? Uh, uh, 
So for this kind of uh, measurement, uh, we have uh, not uh, very uh, uh, practical constraint on the sample thickness. Uh, sample thickness just uh, for some. Uh, uh, it's I think it's the same as the uh, stakes and measurement. So if uh, if you want to measure some uh, uh, rash samples, so you uh, for example you want to measure some uh, carbon uh, uh, edge or uh, oxygen edge, so you you don't have uh, don't need to uh, you should have some uh, sample thickness smaller than uh, 100 nanometer. But for uh, this kind of edge sample, here we measured the the, the thickness of the sample is the diameter of the whole uh, fib uh, volume, so it's about uh, three to five micron. So uh, it's uh, really depends on how large area that you want to scan uh, and uh, what kind of uh, spectra that you want to measure. So if you want to go to carbon edge or oxygen edge or uh, nitrogen edge, so maybe you should have a small, smaller thickness, but uh, uh, for this kind of, uh, for our project uh, for the air gel sample, we can have a very large scale of the sample. And uh, the sample we measured at uh, Cosmic the first time, we cut sample have the diameter about uh, 10 to 20 uh, micron, and it's okay for the measurement. Um, let's say I want to measure mercury. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, all these are at energies of, let's say, 1 keV. Now I want to go all the way till 10 keV approximately. So will this technique work or are there any limit on, are there any constraints on energy as well? Uh, yeah, uh, I think it worked, but we haven't done that before yet. I think the Swiss light source does it at seven kilovolts. They do uh, magnetic stuff on iron at the K edge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, Aaron Miller, you had a question? Yeah, it's kind of following on the question about uh, imaging artifacts. I mean, the, the images you're showing are, are really quite pretty. And I was mm -hmm. curious, what kinds of artifacts do you watch for in the reconstruction? How much care do you have to take either in your measurement or your math to try and avoid getting spurious uh, effects? Here we use uh, uh, here are uh, several different uh, reconstruct uh, software and algorithm that uh, is uh, uh, available now uh, at the beam, uh, different uh, deep beam uh, For our amendment at uh, ARS, we use uh, a sharp uh, a software called Sharp, and uh, it's very powerful. So the uh, reconstructed image is uh, very clean and uh, almost uh, no artifacts. I think uh, they have uh, done a very good job in the pre-processing uh, process. So uh, this is uh, so the reconstruction result is uh, depends on the uh, how coher uh, the, co the coherence of uh, your uh, diffraction pattern and also uh, depends on the uh, noise and uh, 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 vibrations of uh, signal vibrations uh, uh, on your detector. So during the pre-processing uh, 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 period, and we can uh, uh, illuminate uh, all the noise uh, by the pre-processing, and which can give you a much cleaner uh, reconstruct uh, result. And uh, I will show you, uh, 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 I think now in the 3D tomography uh, part, and uh, we did have some artifacts uh, uh, due to the vibration and uh, both the camera, uh, uh, the camera, and uh, also have some distortion, and this kind of artifacts can be il illuminated by uh, by some Fourier transform uh, filter uh, in the uh, process, and this is also available for uh, in the reconstruction software. So I know the, for the different uh, reconstruction software, they also can apply the different uh, image filter to. Uh, illuminate this kind of artifacts. Interesting, thank you. Okay, last question for the break from Matt Neuvel, please. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, hi, if you can hear me. Uh, maybe you said some of this and I missed it, but could you mm -hmm. give for some of these images some idea of what the coherence lengths 
of both longitudinal and transverse are compared to the wavelengths and to the like sort of the, the amount that you have to overlap the images by in order to get these uh, reconstructions uh, to work? I think uh, I don't have the, the comparison uh, between this kind of uh, coherent uh, image uh, here. I didn't show it here. But we did measure the different, uh, uh, we did some tests uh, when we do the high coherent at the beam line uh, last uh, April and uh, June. And we play with the, uh, the slice of the, uh, the, the beam line to cut the slice and uh, also play with the uh, zone blade creation to get a uh, better, and the OSA creation to get a better coherent direction. So if you look at, if you look at the, uh, this uh, uh, image moving, uh, that you, when you hit a sample, if you have a very strong coherent uh, diffraction pattern, so you will see it, it's very obvious uh, on the detector. So you can see it by, uh, by eyes. And uh, for the overlapping, we also measure the, have tested the uh, different uh, overlapping and the influence of the uh, overlapping. And uh, we have measured uh, uh, from 19% uh, to 10%. So uh, if you have a much higher overlapping, it will give you a better uh, re a reconstruction result. But even 10% of 10% uh, 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 overlapping, you can also get a, a, a very good reconstruction result. So after the overlapping is uh, higher than 30 or 40 percent, the improvement is very, very small. So you cannot see it by eyes. Okay, thanks. Great, you should continue. Thank you for taking all the questions. Okay, so uh, next slide I will uh, talk about the 4D dimension by spectral Tycho and uh, Tycho tomography. Uh, so if we have a, a single object that we record the project image from the lots of the different uh, direction, and uh, as shown in the left figure, that, uh, that is what the imaging uh, technique and the microscope do during the uh, material characterization. And if we do this uh, procedure reverse, and we take the set of projection image and we can calculate what the structure of the object must be in the real 3D space. This is called the tomography. So tomography based on the electron microscope is very widely used for the materials and the chemistry characterization. And for our sticks and the Tycho tomography, uh, they have the similar experimental setup with the TDM TOMO. They both measure the set of tube series uh, projection uh, at the different uh, angles. And uh, there are many different algorithms for the 3D reconstruction. For our Slickson and uh, Tycho tomography, since the scanning mode are relative, uh, relative slow, so we take uh, about uh, half hour or a few hours for to capture one image. So different from a lot of tilt uh, series uh, measurement by the TEM with the step size of two or three degree. We have much fewer angle to measure for this kind of tomography. Uh, only from minus 60 to 60 degree and uh, with a large step size uh, about 10 or 15 degree. So since we have limited uh, angles in the measurement, uh, so we are using the compressive sensing algorithm to do the tonal reconstruction in our project. Uh, the 4D uh, characterization, also known as the tonal with the spectra, uh, is a development from the fixed and tomography. Instead of one projection image that uh, we measure at each tilt angle, a stack measurement at a different uh, energy uh, measured at, uh, at each tilt angle. So each reconstructed uh, voxel uh, will contain a spectral chemical information of the object, which will provide the kind of 4D information. So the image below shows the basic setup for the ambient Dixon uh, at the CLS beam line. 
And the sample was mounted on a standard TEM or fib tonal grid, then mounted on a going meter in the sample chamber, and the sample can be rotated around the sample rotation axis. So the, this example is a measurement that taken by our former PhD student, Jim, and uh, on, it's on a polymer fuel cell uh, cathode. And the 4D, 4D ma uh, mapping image here can uh, show in the right figure uh, is the uh, separated uh, chemical map of the different compo components in this uh, cathode. So, Based on this technique, we can get a, a very clear uh, visualization of the, how the different uh, chemistry distribution in the 3D space. And uh, the uh, Tycho tomography is uh, developed from the uh, Stixon uh, tachography based on the sim uh, similar setup. And uh, for our, uh, for my uh, uh, aerial project, uh, this uh, the measurement was uh, carried on the nanosolar two at uh, cosmic beam line. So here I show you the basic setup of the cosmic beam line and uh, uh, also the uh, hardware of uh, the nanosolar uh, two I present. Uh, so the incident uh, incident coherent beam line cross the old uh, nano solar one platform to the sample chain chamber of the nano super two. Uh, here they use the uh, uh, same basic setup uh, uh, from the TEM uh, tomography. Uh, uh, in this nano super two, uh, 45 nanometer dome play is put before the OSA and uh, really fast CCD camera is uh, mount downstream. And the tomography this uh, system uses a standard uh, FEI tomography. So we can use a TEM like a, a FDI tomography holder, and we can put the same TEM uh, tomography uh, sample in, inside the, the chamber. And uh, the goniometer can rotate from uh, minus 8 to 80 degree, uh, minus 80 to 80 degree. And the sample can be moved uh, along the GONU Y and the Z direction, but the GONU X is uh, along the uh, rotation axis. Uh, this is uh, fixed. So during the measurement, the whole system using the zone plane to using the zone plane scanning. So they scan the zone plane to uh, scan the focus beam in the uh, on the sample. So the sample will not move during the tackle measurement. Uh, for our air job project, uh, the sample was uh, prepared by the signal fib uh, to cut it to a cylinder uh, thing and uh, with the length of 10 micron and 3 micron in the diameter and uh, mount uh, on a fib half grid at the top of the thermal grid. Uh, so here I show you some uh, results that uh, I measured at the Cosmic uh, uh, last March. And the 4D tachography images are measured at uh, each rotation angle, uh, uh, including the pre edge and the absorption edge uh, for both zinc oxide and uh, aluminum. Uh, 14 angles uh, are selected with a step size of the 10 degrees with, uh, from a minus uh, uh, 65 to 65 degrees. And uh, a sticks and thermal stack uh, on a large scale is uh, present here. So if we took at the color-coded sticks and image for both uh, zinc oxide and uh, aluminum, all the purple color show the uh, co uh, co-localized composite. At the top of the thermal pin, uh, we can find some uh, zinc oxide depletion can uh, this is uh, due to the FIB milling. And uh, the tachography, uh, uh, tachography, uh, tomography uh, area is selected from the center part of the FIB uh, to avoid this uh, zinc oxide uh, depletion area. So here we take uh, a ROI about 4 by 5 micron and uh, use a step size uh, uh, 40 nanometer step size, uh, 100 uh, milliseconds flow time, and it will take about uh, 
12,000 points uh, for the amendment. So uh, as I remember for the H amendment, uh, uh, it will take about 30 minutes for the image scan and uh, 15 minutes for the reconstruction, which means uh, for one image, it will take uh, 45 minutes for each PICOL image. And uh, that's uh, two hours for four different uh, energy at one angle. And if we measure the whole tomography, it will take about 30 minutes for one sample. And uh, it uh, will generate about uh, around six to eight terabyte uh, data site. And uh, here I show you a roughly aligned uh, uh, zinc oxide uh, chemical stack. You will find some dark and uh, bright spot. So this is uh, uh, some artifact that uh, uh, asked before. And uh, we can illuminate this kind of uh, uh, dark and uh, bright spot by applying a, a Mordian filter to the integrated diffraction signal by the sharp software. And after that, we can uh, clean the, the sample surface. And here I also attach a movie that uh, show you the reconstruction result of our uh, air gel sample. And the uh, in the sample, the uh, aluminum is covered by blue and the zinc oxide uh, coating is covered by red. And uh, in this movie, a fine structure of the chemical distribution of the components can be easily, easily visualized by the 3D reconstruction result. So we can see the, the framework uh, of the aluminum uh, air gel and uh, uh, the smaller uh, zinc oxide particle uh, is attached on the surface of the aluminum. And uh, uh, some of the uh, zinc oxide is uh, uh, individual particle. The particle size is around uh, uh, 15 to 10 to 15 uh, nanometers. So we can only observe uh, these uh, particles by this kind of technique. And uh, I will give some uh, 3D spatial resolution analysis of this uh, kind of work. And the image shows uh, a 30 nanometer slice cut from the reconstructed 3D uh, result at zero degree. And uh, we can find a very nice chemical distribution uh, from the, uh, this image. And the aluminum structure show a uniform uh, porous framework as colored uh, in blue and the red zinc oxide small crack, uh, uh, crystals uh, are close uh, attached uh, on the uh, surface of the aluminum uh, substrate uh, and uh, they distribute in the small holes and the pore, uh, pores area. And uh, if we do the spatial resolution analysis by the line profile and also the uh, FSC, uh, the Fourier shell uh, co uh, co uh, correlation analysis uh, both show a nine nanometer uh, resolution in 3D. So this is a really a big improvement of our result. And uh, the real power of the 4D imaging technique is uh, it can provide a quantitative analysis of this kind of material. We have done lots of uh, analysis on this uh, on various LD coding uh, process for the different uh, cycling, uh, LD cycling. Here I saw some example that uh, we, uh, it's a comparison between six and 12 and uh, uh, 25 cycle, LD cycle. So we can find the, the difference and how it uh, involve, for example, the particle size and uh, the volume fraction and also the surface uh, surface area, they can all, uh, all of this information can be get from the uh, 3D uh, analysis. Uh, here is another example for the 4D image by the Tycho Tomo technique. And uh, I will not expand the uh, discussion here. You can find the detail from the slide uh, below. So what will be uh, what will be the 
next for the for the imaging by uh, Tycho Tomo technique. Um, maybe we can uh, think uh, if for in the fourth generation uh, synchrotron light source, we will get more coherent beam source. And uh, for example, the AOS is going to upgrade to uh, the AOSU and uh, the expected uh, capacity of the new Tycho stick thing is more powerful. And uh, we can have a much faster speed uh, to capture image. And uh, also the development of the fly scan of Tycho and the faster algorithm and uh, also robustic computational hardware development will make sure uh, make the software x-ray Tycho technique use in uh, such as in situ or operational analysis by the XAS or chemistry study in the future. Okay, that's all my talk uh, for today. So thank you for your attention and uh, any questions? Thank you, it was, uh, it was fascinating. Um, Yi Zhang, yeah. you have a question or uh, can you unmute your mic? Oh, uh, so I, I have a question because uh, since zone plate is chromatic, so its focus uh, foot place is actually changing when you are varying energies. So mm -hmm. do, during a uh, during a like a energy scan, do you actually do you uh, in practice do you actually need to change your sample position or uh, or you do yeah. Yeah, uh, it's, it depends how the how large the energy scale that will change. For example, if you do a, a scale stack with a very small iteration energy it, uh, interval, and uh, for example, one uh, EV or 10 EV for each time, so you don't need to, to change it a lot because uh, the uh, Tycho is a kind of uh, uh, lens based technique. So, the focus is not very important. You can stay in focus or also on focus. But if the energy change is quite large, for example, here we measured the uh, our material at both the uh, pre edge and the absorption edge. The difference is about 50 uh, EV or 40 EV. So that's a quite big change for the energy. So at this time, so maybe the focus will be changed, and uh, uh, we have taxed the, the influence of the focus at the solar edge. So um, the, for, the focus really uh, influences the reconstructed result. So if you have a such big energy change, you should redo the focus again when you change it to another energy level, and uh, after the fo uh, focus, you just use the uh, Ambient stick scan to do a, a fast focus scan, and after it's focused, and you can continue the Tycho measurement. Okay, so and also I'm also interested in the you know this sample uh, sample chamber setup mm -hmm. in, in in the previous slides. Uh, in this one? No, not this one. Yeah, this oh. one. So you, okay. uh, sorry, it's. Uh, not this one, the, the in situ, in the sample chamber, oh, sorry. Um, you mean the Tomo, this one? No, no, the sample chamber, so, yeah, this one, yeah. So okay. this nano, sorry, uh, nano, uh, not, uh, not this one, so. Uh, which there is a technical, Thing or something. Your your slide is changing. So basically, you are you have a, a like a cryogenic sample at a sample environment. Do you? Uh, we just need a vacuum chamber. Yeah. And uh, for the because for the different technique for the convenience. Uh, uh, convenient, uh, conventional sticks and ambient sticks, uh, we should uh, get the uh, volume chamber to 10 to minus 4 or 10 to, uh, yeah, uh, middle tort. And uh, but for the uh, typography measurement, because we use a CCD camera, 
and so we need to uh, uh, much higher vacuum. So usually we use the 10 to minus six or to 10 to minus eight meter, uh, uh, meter tall for the vacuum. So, okay. And uh, also the camera should be uh, cooled by the uh, air chilling and uh, the measurement, uh, the temperature measure, uh, for the uh, the CMOS camera should be minus 20 degree. And uh, if I remember correct, uh, the fast CCD camera at uh, AOS is about uh, minus 40 to minus 30 degree. Okay, yeah. so since this zone plate, their working distance is usually very small. And uh, I was wondering how did, how did you fit in all this, uh, you know, the sample holder, this kind of thing in, inside that chamber. So. Is that uh, developed uh, by, not this uh, one, the one you know, in before, the previous night. Yeah, this one. So there's this okay. nine or silver yarn. So you actually have a FEI Tomo, Tomo holder inside there. Yes. Yeah. The sample holder, is it? Yeah. So this this is actually so you uh, develop so you you bought this uh, some thermal holder from this uh, FBI company not developed in house I guess. Uh, I'm not quite sure about the detail uh, how the AI AIS guys uh, how they uh, design and oh. uh, make this kind of uh, experiment setup. But uh, yes, it's very close to a sample. So sometimes uh, so. For the sample size, uh, we have some uh, uh, constraints. So, uh, for example, uh, here we use a half grade uh, TM, sample, TM sample, so it's just a small pin. So you can move very close to the uh, the OSA, and the zone plates can also move very closer. And uh, if you use some uh, kind of some, uh, if you put a TM grade inside, so maybe the rotation angle you cannot reach to minus eighty two. Uh, plus 80 degrees. So maybe you can just uh, rotate around uh, minus 30 or minus 40 to uh, 30 or 40 degree. So it will depend on what kind of sample that you use. Okay, thank, thank you.